Welcome to another episode of Field Phone Ops. Today we're going to talk about field phones and batteries and the different ways you can use to power your field phone. So sit back and here we go. I've been getting a lot of questions and commentary on a couple of my, my YouTube page and Facebook about batteries. And that is a good subject to talk about because uh, different field phones use different batteries. Uh, a lot of the NATO uh, in Western uh, basically use D cells. The phones are set up, the compartments are built to hold D cell batteries. Then you get to the, uh, the Eastern pack, the Warsaw pack. Some of the Russians use some really crazy batteries, different voltages, different style and sizes of batteries. And basically it's, you know, how do you do this? You know, I, I order a phone off of eBay. I want to hook it up and use it and, you know, mess around with it. Now, well, how do I get it to work? You know, I don't have, they don't make this big square size battery anymore or the connectors that line up and all that stuff. So basically I broke it down into uh, basically some questions to ask. The first question you want to talk about is how big is the battery compartment? I mean, can you get by with using double A's? Can D cells fit? You know, that's what I'm saying. Um, what's the required operating voltage? It's going to decide how many batteries you need, how you need to wire them. Uh, what kind of battery connections does the phone have? Does it have the little screw down screws or binding posts that you can just stick wires into and tighten up? Or does it have some kind of contacts that you got to like slide and fit the battery into? What's the intended use for your phone? Are you going to use it for messing around? Or is it the idea to deploy them into whatever situation you want to use? And also the other thing is how long do you want the battery to last? Because they, uh, Double A battery puts out 1.5 volts, but a D cell battery, which puts out 1.5 volts, lasts a lot longer than an A cell battery. So this is some of the things I'm talking about. And these are some of the things we're going to look at as we go on. Basically, what I did was I sat down and I made a quick spreadsheet. I was not quick; it took a while, and I basically listed all the phones that I have and have had experience with. And basically uh, categorize them into basically the type phone, origin, uh, battery type, operating voltage, and the uh, what a modern equivalent voltage and some remarks. And basically what I broke, what it breaks down to, like I said before, most of the uh, NATO Western batteries, with exception of the British, were built to hold D cell batteries. Uh, E8s, uh, 312s, um, let's see, SB22. Um, TP6, uh, FT58, uh, German FFO, OBZB, the Dutch phone, all those were designed basically to operate on D-cell batteries. So basically you're covered there. When you start getting into the craziness, is a lot of the British phones were designed to, to operate with a square-shaped battery. It used 3 volts, but it was a square-shaped battery. And... The uh, British phone doesn't have actual binding posts to connect the battery to. It's actually got wires with loops on it that actually fit on the battery, which had little binding post screws. You just screw a little cap off, put this on, screw it on, and that's how the batteries worked. And then you get to the uh, the Warsaw Pack, the uh, copies of the FF33s and that, the uh, TAI43s and a lot of them. They actually had actually small binding posts on them where they put a battery in it. There was a big square battery. That had wires on it, and you hooked a wire to each one of the binding posts, and you screwed your little toggles on to tighten it down. Now, this is all fine and dandy. You can't get those batteries anymore. The good thing is, most of the way these phones were set up to operate was different. Was basically, they either work, they work on three volts, basically two double A C or D cell batteries will will make them operate. 3 volts. There's a few of them we'll talk about as I go on. It takes a little bit more, but most of them operate on 3 volts. So that's where you need to look at the, the, the phone itself and the battery compartment and what, what can I fit inside there. Uh, can I fit two, two C-cell batteries in a holder in there? We'll look at holders later on. and uh, Or do I have to use C-cells or A, double A's? Or the other thing is you need to ask, what am I going to use it for? And how long do I need the batteries to last? So these are some of the things we need to look at. Like I said, there we'll talk about holders later. It gets really difficult when you get into the Warsaw Pact phones, especially some of the uh, the uh, Soviet phones, some of the East German phones. Uh, there's some Bulgarian phones. They operate on 10 volts, and a 9 volt battery will make them work. But they've got some really, really crazy battery compartments, and stuff just won't fit. So you really got to think about what you're going to do. So that's where I, I put this chart together. Um, I'm going to have it on here. I'm probably also going to upload it into my uh, my Google storage place. And you can, if you want a copy of it, because you can't see it here, 
go ahead and hit me my email up and you'll be able to go into it and and download it and look at it on the uh, or get a copy of it downloaded um, also there's some other crazy ones for instance some of the notes on here the TP9 battery which is a US phone takes uh, basically three actually four batteries it takes a uh, a 4.5 volt battery to run the normal talk part of it then it takes three 22 and a half volt batteries to run the vacuum tubes to make the amplifiers work that's another one's going to have to be hand built or hand custom made uh the gray six the remote unit on a gray six it uses d cell batteries to talk back and forth but to operate in the radio mode and make the relays work on the local unit that's connected to the radio, you have to have a 45-volt battery that's not made anymore. So you have to custom make a battery. So that's why I put this chart together. And then, like I said, next we'll go into uh, some of the different holders and the different ways you can put this stuff and get it wired into work. Um, maybe later I'll look at doing a video on each particular phone about how to do it. I don't really want to go there right now. I think if I can give everybody a, an idea right now of what's available, where you can get it, how it looks, it's, I mean, you pretty much can do it yourself. And sort of that's what I'm trying to do with this, uh, this, this video here. The first battery holders we'll talk about are the AA battery holders. Like I said, all these are available on Amazon. I have basically all three of these different types. Um, and what it comes down to is what can you physically fit inside that compartment on the phone? And uh, also how long do you want it to last? Um, basically most of mine I'm using for demos when I set up my show and that. So a double A's will work. There also is a big price difference between double A's and C's, if you know what I mean. And it, I, I do a lot of batteries, so I'll, I'll give you credit. But like I said, this is what you what you can look at. This works for a lot of the phones. It's got the uh, the wires already on it, so you can just... Um, screw it in place. It's actually got, it's hard to see on these, but it's got a small in the upper right corner of the uh, 4AA1. It's actually got a little on-off switch, which is nice because you can put the batteries in it, put it in, turn it on or off, and not have to take it all the way apart and remove the batteries when you don't want to use it. Okay, the next we're going to talk about is a D-cell, which, same thing, what will fit in the phone and what won't fit in the phone. The C's and D's, um, Basically the same thing. I, I've got some C-cell holders and some D-cell holders, depending on what you want to put it in. I've also ordered some of these uh, adapter things they have on here that allows you to use a, a AA battery and put it in this holder and use it inside a, basically a D-cell phone. Um, I'm going to try using some of these on my uh, Norwegian TP6N because it holds three D-cell batteries and... I'm thinking, for my purpose, that having to buy all the D-cell batteries, we can use a lot more double A's, and also some of the other NATO phones I have. I'm going to try running it into instead of having to go out and buy all these D-cell batteries because, like I said, it gets a little bit pricey at the time. So basically, what you want to look at is what kind of phone and uh, you know how big my battery compartment is. Next, we're going to talk about the nine volt batteries. A lot of the Warsaw Pack phones you can see on the sheet actually use ten volts to run them. Um, and they have some really crazy shaped battery compartments. And the easiest thing to do is get one of these 9-volt battery holders like this. I have both these styles. I find the ones the alligator clips are the best, though, because you can reach in there and clip them onto the different. Uh, one of them actually has snaps inside the phone. The other one has basically contacts. We have to force a battery into it. But it's you can take the alligator clips and clip it on that, and, and it works good. So those are uh, the other way to go. Next, we're going to talk about the crazy battery that the uh, TA57 and the P193 switchboard use. It's this square 10-volt uh, battery you can see in the picture compared to a 9-volt. Um, I've tried to find these. Um, I've looked everywhere. I, I imagine they still make them in Russia or one of the, the, the countries like that, but I haven't found any place to buy them. But it is possible to take and wedge a 9-volt battery into these phones or into the TA57 and stuff some paper or something around to hold it in place to, to make it work. It'll like hold in the contacts. But the P9193 switchboard's a little bit different. I had actually did a video where I actually installed the 9-volt battery in there and packed it with cardboard and everything to hold everything in place. And then uh, a, a, a friend of mine says, you know what, can I print one of those for you? And I thought about it for a second. I said, you know what, that's not a bad idea. So the next one I'm going to go into, we'll go to the next slide, 
is what it looks like when you print one out. So he actually print one out or print one, printed one, and I tried it out and it worked really good. It fits in both. Um, the only issue I had is uh, the one for the P93. You actually have to tip it upside down and put it inside, and the battery falls out. That's why you see the rubber band wrapped around it so the battery doesn't fall out. You also need to check and see and make sure you get the polarity aligned right when you put it in. But it worked really good. Um, I don't personally have a copy of that uh, file to print print it from. But if you get a hold of me in my email, I can drop a note to uh, the guy that does own it. And I'm sure he wouldn't have any problem with sending it out. And if you want to print your own battery holder for these phones, you, you can print your own battery holders. And like I said in closing, the idea behind this was to get every, let everybody have an idea about... Uh, how you can do your, your batteries. I mean, it's not impossible. Just got to go out. All these battery holders I showed in this are available on, you know, Amazon. That's where I bought a lot of mine. I've got a whole drawer in my shop full of them. So, and uh, whatever you find works best for you. If you find out that one particular holder that I didn't mention works good, or uh, you want to try to be a purist and use uh, the exact, as close as you can to find the batteries. I don't know if a lot of them are made. Printing is another option. I know that there's uh, an individual on the fa on my Facebook on the Field Phone Facebook page that actually prints basically replicas of the uh, batteries they use in the FF 33s phones uh, of the Germans used during World War II, and that's basically uh, what he does. He prints those out. Um, this is pretty much it. If I missed anything or if you know of any more info, go ahead and please let me know. I don't know everything. So if you find something, go ahead and uh, let me know. And thanks for watching.